That's the unmistakable sound of a V8. And this is the unmistakable shape of the new seventh generation Ford Mustang. This is the seventh generation pony car from Ford since 1965. Rather than all new, it's an evolutionary overhaul of the previous model sold between 2015 and 2023. There are plenty of carryover parts, including the roof, windscreen pillars and rear glass, and this S650 codenamed Mustang is based on a development of the previous S550 model's platform. The Mustang's design, however, has been made noticeably tauter. For the better, we think it looks really good. EcoBoost and GT models return, but there's also the first new nameplate appendage since the 2001 Bullet. Bullet, Mark I, Boss, all famous heritage nameplates that we've come to know and love with the Mustang. And now we've got Dark Horse. So Ford's hoping that in 30 years time, this will be revered just like those other nameplates. And Dark Horse, I reckon that's a really cool name. So over the GT V8, what's different? Well, one of the big differences is under the bonnet, upgraded Coyote V8, and we've got these terrific twin nostrils here. Now they're feeding twin air filters and twin throttle bodies. So you're getting a bit of a, a bigger bang under the bonnet. And to deal with that bigger bang, we've got forged con rods and enhanced camshafts. So that only gives it a little bit more power than the GT, but it is a neat 500 horsepower, or in our money, 373 kilowatts. Very nice. Some details for the Dark Horse. Well, it's available in this rather fetching indigo blue metallic paint. There are other colors such as red if you want it. Wheels, they're 19 inch standard. And inside there, Brembo brakes for good stopping power and 390 millimeter rotors up front with six piston calipers. Up here on the flanks, Dark Horse badge. And then coming to the rear of the car, we've got a performance spoiler. And then down here, beautiful quad exhaust pipes linked to a standard active valve exhaust system with multiple modes, including quiet and track. The Mustang's cabin is most certainly all new, and it has been modernized with a pair of connected digital screens, a 13.2 inch central touchscreen for infotainment, and a 12.4 inch display for the configurable instrument cluster. Ford is aiming to increase the Mustang's appeal to younger buyers with swipeable, changeable 3D drive mode settings, which are created using the same Unreal Engine tool used to make video games such as Forza and Gran Turismo. Your dark horse interior can come in any interior color you like, as long as it's indigo blue. That's matched with indigo blue stitching and an anodized blue titanium gear lever ball for manual versions or anodized metallic paddles for the automatic. The steering wheel is now shaped with a flat bottom and torso hugging Recaro seats are available as an option. The interior certainly looks more modern with its digital screens. Now materials and switchgear quality around the cabin doesn't feel like a major step forward. On closer inspection, there's still a perception that the interior budget had a strict limit. So Ford has extracted some more horsepower from the five litre Coyote V8. And the V8 is such a pivotal part of the Mustang experience. And this is a very tractable engine, revs to 7,500 RPM, but not particularly quick getting there, but it's a nice journey, very linear. And the engine also sounds good. It kind of purrs along, but it's also got a bit of mongrel to it as well when you want it, when you get stuck into the throttle. Oh, that sounds great. Also great is the Tremec six-speed manual. You can get a 10-speed auto, but get a manual because they're still available somewhere. It's a shorter throw than the Gatrag manual in the GT, and there's a really nice heft to the shift action, which suits an American muscle car, I reckon. We've got optional Recaros in this test car that we've got. Extremely huggy, which is good when you're going around a curvy road like this. Actually, they're quite comfortable even for longer journeys, but a few customers will be happy just having the regular seats that have a little bit more room. Gearing is quite tall, just like the previous Mustang, and sixth is a total overdrive. So even on a freeway, I prefer to keep it in fifth because you get a better sound from the engine. You've got an active valve exhaust. You can have a quiet mode so you don't upset the neighbors in the morning when you're going out for that early Sunday morning drive, or you can put it in 
track mode and get really noisy. Ford's engineers have worked on the dynamics of the Mustang, and that's good. The previous one that went to an independent rear suspension for the first time after years and years of a live axle, that improved things from a ride and handling perspective. But now this car has gone another step further. There's a new steering rack and it's more linear, it's quicker than before. So this Mustang actually turns in really keenly into corners. That's lovely. And just generally, it just feels a more cohesive, better balanced car than the previous Mustang. Couldn't always trust the rear end, but this one you can really push on and it just feels very confidence inspiring, feels more planted. Ford describes the Dark Horse as its most track capable five liter V8 Mustang yet. And it was hard to disagree when we took the top spec muscle car for some thrilling laps around the Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval in North Carolina. The Dark Horse's Brembo brakes were superb with their strong progressive stopping power from high speed. And a no lift shift function allows the driver to keep the accelerator pedal pinned for smoother, quicker upshifts. An optional handling package increases grip level significantly, primarily thanks to its semi-slick Pirelli tires, though they're not that great on the road. It's a moot point though, as Ford Australia isn't going to offer this package. Disappointingly, we didn't get to try one of the Mustang's other new party tricks, an electronic drift brake lever that would lock the rear wheels for old school sideways fun. So just how much will the new Mustang cost? Well, we don't know yet, as Ford's sports car doesn't reach Australia until early 2024. What we can predict, however, is that pricing will go northwards in line with the current industry trend. The entry EcoBoost model is likely to start closer to 60 grand than 50 grand, while US pricing suggests the Dark Horse will cost more than $100,000 in Australia. Ford wants the Dark Horse to be considered a future classic, revered in about 30 years time, just like the Mark I and the Boss. But even right now, there's a lot to like about this new generation Mustang. And if this is to be the last V8 powered pony car, well, this is not a bad swan song at all.